Hey guys, I'm James Cootie and welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing a video response to the four revolutionary riddles video that Veritas Sim posted up. So in the first video, Derek showed us a cylinder that has an interesting property. On inclined plane, it starts to roll, stops again, and then starts periodically. And we will see that it rolls, and then it stops, and then it rolls, and then it stops. So my theory is the cylinder has something inside it that is moving around, changing the center of gravity. At first, the object is in the lowest point, allowing the cylinder to slightly roll a little further. As it rolls further, the object inside adhered to the walls gets lifted higher and puts it into its most stable position. But this then has an inclined wall on the inside that the object is sitting on and it starts to roll. So again, it'll move into a lower position. Once that happens, the cylinder is then free to start rolling again, so it'll create the starting and stopping movement. In the second scenario, we're shown a bike with a string attached to one of the pedals that's pulled backwards in the direction the bike is facing. We then have to work out which way the bike's going to move when this happens. Now what I'm going to do is pull backwards horizontally on this string, and I want you to predict what the bike will do. Now there's two different possibilities for what's going to happen when this string is pulled. The first one being if the bike is in the low gear. Now if you've ever ridden a bike, you'll know that when you're in a low gear, your feet will move a lot, but the bike won't move very much. This means that the bottom of the pedal's rotation, it's moving backwards relative to the ground. If we were to have a string attached to the pedal and pull it backwards in this gear ratio, it's going to have the same effect as someone pedaling, and the bike's going to move forwards. However, if we have the bike in a high gear ratio, the pedals will move much less as the bike travels long distance forwards. If you've ever ridden a bike, you'll realize that one rotation of pedals can move you a long distance. Because the distance you're moving is so much greater, the pedals are not going to be moving backwards relative to the ground at any point, as they will still be traveling forwards at a much higher velocity as they slowly rotate through the bottom of their rotation. If the bike is in a high gear like this, then pulling on the string is merely going to drive the bike backwards because the gear advantage of the pedals is too great to actually propel the bike. In the third scenario, we're told we have to run two laps of a running track. The first lap we can do at any speed, but the overall velocity we do for this lap we'll call V1. We then have to work out what speed we have to run the second lap at, so that the overall velocity of the two laps is double V1. How fast do you have to run that second lap so that your total average speed is 2 V1? Now to solve this riddle, we have to work out how velocity is calculated. To simplify things to this puzzle, we won't take the direction of the vector into account, we'll just take the overall distance traveled. So velocity is calculated as distance traveled over time. So because we know a normal running track is 400 meters long, we can say that's our distance traveled, and we'll say the time taken is x second. To increase our velocity, there are two things we can do. We can either travel a further distance, or travel the distance in a lesser time. So to double our velocity, we need to do either of two things. We have to double the distance traveled, or we have to halve the time. So because we know that running our second lap means we're running a total of 800 meters, we've already doubled the distance traveled, which means the time has to remain constant for the velocity to double. So if we run 800 meters in X seconds and we only run 400 meters in X seconds, the second lap has to be done in zero seconds, meaning we, the velocity we have to travel is infinite. In the final question, we're told that some part of a train will always be moving backwards relative to the ground no matter what speed the train is traveling at. My question to you is, which part is it? Now this question relates specifically to trains or anything else traveling on a track. Wheels on the ground just have one flat surface that travels on the ground. This is called the tread. Now train wheels also have a tread, but they also have a flange on the wheels which sits inside the rails to stop them coming off the track. This flange has a greater diameter than the tread itself. And we know that as a wheel is traveling along, the bottom of the tread will always be stationary relative to the ground. Now, we know that the flange has a greater diameter, meaning that as it completes one revolution, it will travel a greater distance than the tread itself. This means that as the wheel is rotating, the bottom part of the flange has to move backwards relative to the ground as it rotates under the tread. We can demonstrate this using a simple kitchen plate with the foot of the plate being the tread and the outside of the plate being the flange. Anyway guys, I hope you liked this video as much as I enjoyed making it. 
Make sure you check out Derek's channel. He's posts up awesome videos all the time. He's one of the first channels I subscribe to on YouTube. As always guys, make sure you subscribe to me. I put videos out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and occasionally random ones like this. And again, thanks for watching.